Hey everyone. Uh, before we get into this video, I have to acknowledge up front that this is going to be a very sensitive video that I'm making. The topic we are discussing is definitely a little volatile. I know people will definitely have an opinion on it. I certainly do. That's why we're making this video. And I expect the comments are going to get very, very heated. Hence why I always say flame responsibly. We are going to disagree on this one and we will probably disagree strongly for that matter. So we need to treat each other with respect. But before we begin, I'm not going to open up with like any little cute little quip or nothing like that. I'm going to share a personal story so that you know where I stand on things. Several years ago, about 2011, I would say, my sister-in-law, Crystal, died on her honeymoon. There was faulty wire equipment when she and my brother decided to go parasailing. The line snapped, they fell, and she died. And he almost died with her. And that event had a profound effect on my life, on all of our lives, really. And it was interesting to be living during it because we're suffering and we're trying to make sense of the whole thing. Meanwhile, we have a media storm surrounding us and making news art clips, writing articles and doing specials. E! Entertainment did a special on my brother that we were not 100% happy with. I mean, there were some good points in there, but overall, it was kind of weird to be seeing something that was affecting us on such a personal level being made for entertainment purposes, in a sense. So, I understand where this woman is coming from. The woman I'm talking about is the mother of a young boy named James Bulger. In 1993, he was taken from his parents and killed at the age of two years old. It's a very tragic thing. It should never have happened, and... No parent should have to suffer through that, and I can understand why that would be hurtful, why it still would hurt today. The strange thing about the case was that the murderers were not men or anyone that you would normally think of. They were two boys. I believe they were 9 and 11. And it's still debatable why they did it. I mean, they claimed different things, and it opened up the conversation about how harshly should juveniles be charged in serious crimes that continues to this day, largely because of this case. Well, there was a filmmaker who was looking at this story throughout the years and was always taken aback how the boys were always in the wrong, and they are, and the boys were portrayed this way. They were portrayed this way. They were monsters. And he wanted to make a movie where he decided... Let's look at it from their point of view. Let's see what it's like to be them in this situation. You're 9, 10, 11 years old, whatever you are, and you are being charged with murder. That is the movie he decided to make. And that movie, called Detainment, I believe, has been nominated for an Academy Award for Best Live Action Short. This is not a documentary. This is a live action short. And he made it and based it off of all of these recordings that the police department recorded, which I believe are publicly available. And he made a movie that I have not seen, by the way, but from what I understand, is at the very least a little sympathetic to their plights. Well, James Bolger's parents are not happy about it. They are far from happy about it. And you know what? If I was in their position, I would be angry about it too. I'm not going to lie. But they have asked something that I think is wrong, very, very wrong. And we're going to go over this BBC article, and I'm going to explain why this is wrong. But they want the film to be withdrawn from the Oscar race. Oh boy, this hits me on a couple levels. So according to BBC, Bolger's mother, Denise Fergus, told ITV earlier on Thursday... He should remove it from the Oscars, referring to the um, film Detainment. Remove it from the public domain. Withdraw yourself. I have very big problems with this, and we are going to talk about it. Because here's the thing. But Vince Lambe, whose film Detainment is nominated for Best Live Action Short Film, told the BBC, I won't withdraw it from the Oscars. He said... It's like saying we should burn every copy of it. I think it would defeat the purpose of making the film. I agree, by the way. 
Detainment recreates the moments before and after 10-year-old Robert Thompson and John Venables took James from a shopping center in Boodle, Maryside in 1993, as well as their police interviews using the original transcripts. Lambie said, The public opinion at the moment now is that those two boys were simply evil and nobody who says anything different or gives an alternative reason as to why they did it or tries to understand why they did it, they get criticized for it. And that is wrong. I understand why they do that. I really do. But it is wrong. Um, I think we have the responsibility to try and make sense of what happened. And I agree. Sometimes there is no sense to be made. Unfortunately, sometimes people do do things just because they're evil or they want to do them. It's, it's a very sad thing, of course, but I do agree and try and make sense of it. The filmmakers have faced criticism for not consulting Denise Bolger and her family about the film, which, by the way, I also agree with that. That was not right. Lambie has previously apologized for not make, making Miss Fergus aware of it soon enough and told the BBC, it's something we did think long and hard about. I wanted to meet with them and try to explain why we made it. But that was only after the film was being seen at screenings and film festivals. He continued, I do regret not telling them about it sooner. So here's the situation as it stands right now, where we are at in the story. You have this horrible murder. And everyone knows about it. Like, you, you look up James Bolger, and you can read so many articles, and heck, you can even read books about the situation. People will be writing about this for a long time. Probably forever, to be honest. And you have a situation where a filmmaker is looking at all this stuff, and he's saying all they're doing is showing that the boys are evil. And I'm wondering, are they really evil? Like, why would they do this? What went through their mind when they wanted to to do this. And I want to make a movie exploring that. And you know what? That is perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. That's what artists do. Sometimes they create art because they want to, you know, think about something. They want to contemplate things. Here's some good examples. There's two movies about Hitler out there that actually portray Hitler as a human being. Not a good person, but a human being. It's a One was a German film called Downside, or is it Downfall? It was one of those two. And it was actually nominated for an Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film. The other was an American film called Max, in which John Cusack plays an art dealer who meets a, you know, budding artist named Adolf Hitler, who has great paintings, but he does not know how to express himself until he becomes the leader of the Nazi party. In both situations... These are hard movies to watch because they ask the question, you know, what could have happened if Hitler had channeled his emotions into other things? It even kind of explains why he felt the way he felt about things. And this was clearly an evil man. I mean, he did things that we are still suffering the consequences of to this very day. And when those movies came out, people said, you should not make Hitler look human. He was not human. He was a monster. But that's not true. The truth of the matter was he was a human and he probably did have a reason for feeling the way he felt. I mean, granted, he was undoubtedly a little sick. He was very, very wrong. And I am not defending him at all. But what the, the scary thing about people like Hitler is that when you acknowledge they're human, you acknowledge that that monstrosity those horrible acts can come from anyone. Another movie that I can think about that got a very similar pushback, The Last Temptation of the Christ, which, by the way, this one's a little bit less offensive because Jesus isn't even portrayed in a bad light in this movie. However, you have very religious, deeply devote people who, you know, they look at the Bible and they don't want it to be even thought about in terms of what what if? What if this had happened? What if this had happened? I remember trying to explain to someone why the Da Vinci Code didn't bother me. I told them the Da Vinci Code does not bother me because the only way for the theory of the Da Vinci Code to work is if Jesus Christ actually lived and walked this earth. And as such, I see that there's being no real controversy because if someone says this is what happened, I mean, whether it was true or not, you have to look at it like, so you do believe that Jesus Christ existed. Like, but then I had, but when I was trying to tell that to some people, some people say, but Jesus wasn't like this. He wasn't the man. It was like, 
that's not the point. That is not the point. It is an interpretation, and so is The Last Temptation of the Christ. The author of that book, and by extension, Martin Scorsese, I do not believe set out be, because to make something where they said Jesus is terrible, he was human just like us. They, maybe they were wrestling with the concept of what's it like to be human and God. That's what I saw it as. They said, what if Satan realized that the crucifixion was a bad thing? And Satan came to Jesus and said, you have done all you need to do. Tell God to get you off that cross, and here is what you can have. You can have all these things. Why is it so, that we are so offended that someone would at least think about that happening? They didn't say it actually happened. They're saying, we wonder what would his reaction be if that took place. And by the way, the conclusion they came to is that Jesus would ultimately still look at the world, look at himself, and say, the needs of my people are greater than what the needs of myself are, and he chooses to go back onto the cross at the end of the movie. I am not offended by that message. In fact, I think that's a very positive message. It, is it biblically accurate? No, but I don't mind them thinking about it. I really don't. This is why I don't get offended when Family Guy makes jokes about it. They find the funny little incre little funny things in the Bible, and they make fun of them. They're allowed to do that. They are artists. As such, this guy is allowed to make movies however he wants them to make and contemplate whatever situation he wants. That's what artists do. You cannot be telling them what they can and can't do. And this is where it started to get really sensitive because one thing that he did do wrong, he did not tell the family that he was making them this until after the movie was finished and screened. But there might even be a reason for that. It's like last month, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Fergus told ITV's Loose Women she was asking people to boycott the film, quote, because I just don't think it should have been made in the first place, especially without James' parents being consulted. Again, he doesn't have to get your permission, unfortunately. He can make whatever he wants. As for the whole boycott thing, I will be a little snarky in this one instance. It's not like short films make money. We're talking about a 30-minute film that's not going to be in a lot of theaters, except as part of the Oscar showcase, so... I don't think there's anything to boycott, to be honest. It's like, and then you have the police detective's criticisms. On Thursday, Mrs. Fergus told the morning that the film was reliving the nightmare for her. Which, again, I'm sensitive to that. That is definitely something to consider. I tried to put it behind me. I've gone through all these years to see that still image of him being led to his death by those two. And now it's being shown again. I'm not going to criticize that. That would be very hard to deal with. The detective who brought James Bolger's killers to justice has also said Lambay made a grave mistake in putting the film forward for an Oscar and called on him to show decency by withdrawing it. Albert Kirby said the film misrepresents the investigation into the toddler's death. Describing Detame as insensitive, he said the film depicted an awful lot of aggression during police interviews, which I would not be surprised about. He told BBC's Northwest Tonight, the actual events he puts in the film are accurate. You cannot fault that about it. But to my mind, that's irrelevant. It's the whole context of it. And that's that's an argument that's a very flimsy argument. You can't go saying that it's, you know, insensitive and misrepresents what happened and then says the actual events are accurate. That Because it sounds like he's not misrepresenting anything. It's just bringing up a situation they would all like to understandably put behind them. It's like the building they use, it looks like some, some disused warehouse, whereas we went to inordinate lengths to make sure they were comfortable it was closed for prisoners they had drinks they had crisps they had you had solicitors a social worker with them and the parents it was all very convenial which to my knowledge that is what's shown in the movie but i haven't seen the movie so the retired detective superintendent also said scenes on the railway line where james body was found were dealt with insensitively he added it's causing so much unnecessary upset and again he has a point movies like this do cause unrest I know people who cannot watch Schindler's List because it brings up very, very bad memories for, for them, and they just can't do it. Um, but should Schindler's List have never been made? Oh. Film regulation needed, and now we're getting... This is where I really went from like understanding where they were coming from to being very opposed to where they were coming from. Because Miss Fergus told them this morning there should be regula regulation on dramatization, saying... If it's a documentary, the family should be contacted, contacted beforehand. He's even said he never got in contact because he knows I'd say no. 
How does he know I'd say no? He's never met me. He doesn't say he doesn't know me. I wouldn't have no, said no straight away. I'd have said, show me or tell me what your plans are and we'll take it from there. No, I wouldn't have agreed with the way he's done it, but I would have told him to do it a different way. Now, that's where it starts getting problematic. That is where I got rubbed the wrong way, and that's where we're going to start getting into, like, rant territory, like some 15 minutes into this video, which is going to be a lot longer than I expected. Again, we are talking about filmmakers and their art and their vision. You do not tell them how to make them. You do not. She's saying, oh, he doesn't know I'd say no. I would tell him what to do. No. He had this in mind. He was going to show the murders from the killer's point of view and contemplate if they were treated fairly or why they did it. There is no way the victim's parents are going to agree to that. So, of course, he didn't say anything. Now, he should have had a courtesy, but here's the thing. What if he had said something out of courtesy and you said, well, I want to know what it's about. He's like, well, this is what's about. And you're like, well, I don't like that. It's like, well, I'm going to make it anyway. That is his right. And she is saying you don't need to be regulated because, again, I sympathize that this is probably hard. If I were them, if I were the parents of James Bolger, I would choose not to watch this. I don't think that's something they need to watch. But here's the thing. If they got their way and they said, we don't like how this is being portrayed, so we're going to complain to them about how it's portrayed and the film is going to get shelved, like it's going to be censored essentially. Well, who's to stop anyone from going the next step? Military men can go to Avatar and say, we don't like the way the military is portrayed. We need you to ban that film. You know, the Germans can go to Spielberg and say, we do not like the way the, G the Germans were shown in Schindler's List. We need to ban that. What about Christians? We don't like the way Jesus Camp portrayed a Christian camp. And that is a documentary, by the way. We want you to cut that. We want you to censor that. We want you to take it out of the rotation. This is how it needs to be portrayed. You, that is a very, very slippery slope. You cannot go down that road ever. That I will never, ever agree with. As someone who does not want film being touched, I am the person who got offended when Spielberg decided to replace the guns with walkie-talkies in E.T. I was offended when George Lucas, because it made Han Solo look like a bad guy, decided to cut it so that Greedo shot first. I was offended when Kevin Spacey got cut out of all the money in the world because it's like, well, what happens if you find another actor whose past or something he does is problematic? Are you going to go back to classic films and start cutting them? Heck, when I saw the Bette Davis postage stamp and they removed her cigarette, I refused to buy those stamps because that is not the Bette Davis I know. Granted, smoking is bad and we are way more aware of that nowadays. But I am not ever going to condone censorship, and I will not do it in this case either. Yes, this guy made a movie that the parents find problematic. That does not mean we need to regulate it. They can choose not to watch it. I can choose not to watch it. And the public can decide whether or not this is a message they can get behind. That's all there is to it. And yes, if he wants your participation... If he feels it will be valuable, he will contact you. But you. But if he contacted you and you say, I think you should do it this way, I won't let you do it this way, he's going to go like, I don't care. I'm going to make it this way. That is, I cannot agree with censorship. I never will. Let's let's continue this. Um, Lambay said in a statement given to this morning, the film was never intended to bring any further anguish to the family of James Bulger. We never intended any disrespect by not counseling them. While it is a painfully difficult case to understand, I believe we have a responsibility to try and make sense of what happened. Critics have specifically condemned the film for being commended the film for being responsible and respectful to the victim. I, I can't comment on that. I haven't seen it. Miss Fergus's husband, Stewart, also questioned the duty of care to the child actors in the film, saying it's bad enough for them to have to go through the lines. I'm hoping for the two children, the actors, and there's a duty of care for them. The scenes they had to reenact were quite horrific. He added, the child that's playing James is in tears, sobbing. I, Yeah, that's acting. That's acting. Petition against the film. Presenters F Philip Sch Schofield, I believe it is, suggested a duty of care may have been taken during the film, adding child actors are notoriously brilliant, 
Possibly they're young, good actors. They've cried because they're told to cry. Lambie told the BBC he spent a lot of time working with the young actors before filming started, and they were very well prepared for it. There were, quote, there were a lot of relaxed moments in between the scenes, even though the scenes themselves were quite intense. We'd still be having fun with them during the breaks, which is important. Um, Mr. Fergus said he had seen the film, but his wife had not. And that, Mr. Fergus, is your choice. I'm sorry to say, it's your choice. If you didn't want anything to do with this, I would not watch it. Now, granted, I also acknowledge that because the film is out there, you're probably going to have reporters you know, hounding you for interviews and stuff. And that is a whole nother topic of appropriateness, but you don't have to watch this if you don't want to. More than 150,000 people have now signed a petition set up before the nominations were announced on Tuesday, asking the Oscars to disqualify the 30 minute film and stop it from being shown. Mrs. Fergus has been a vocal campaigner over the years, pressing for longer sentences for her son's murderers who were sentenced to a minimum of eight years and published her book, I Let Him Go, which I'm interested in reading now. In a statement released after Ms. Fergus, Mrs. Fergus first spoke about the film, Lambie said, I have enormous sympathy for the Bolger family, and I'm extremely sorry for any upset the film may have caused them. With hindsight, I am sorry I didn't make Mrs. Fergus aware of the film. The film was not made for financial gain, and nobody involved in the making the film intends to profit from it. And that, by the way, is why the, the boycotts and stuff will probably not work. It is a short film. I think at most they'll sell some copies of it on iTunes for two or three dollars. Otherwise, it's going to be shown in the compilation. But here's the issue. I understand both sides of the issue. You have a filmmaker who wants to explore this sensitive subject. That's what artists do. And he found something that he was especially interested in, and he made it, and it has great acclaim. It's been nominated for an Oscar. That means it was clearly handled well for the most part. I mean, Oscars don't mean everything, but it, mean, it means something. It means enough people like to say, yeah, that moved me. How it moves them, I don't know. Again, I haven't seen it. But it's based off a very sensitive true story event. And the survivors of that incident are unhappy. They were not consulted and they want to be censored. I understand why they're upset that they were not consulted, but here's the thing, he doesn't need to do that. And for that matter, even if he did and they told him what to do, he didn't need to listen to them. And that they want to censor it, like, no, no, I will never go down that path. You cannot do that because once you do that, then you have to start taking everything else. Like, oh, where, where's some movies? Where's some movies? Um, let's just let's just grab some some movies. Like, I'm offended by Chris by the portrayal of Christmas in the movie. Get rid of it. It's like, I um don't think this movie's funny. Get rid. Oh heck, maybe this is ra racist of the French. Who knows? So what about what about this one? I don't like the fact that there's Muppet face. Okay, these are mostly Muppet movies. I, I just grabbed whatever was nearby. But you see how it can get. That, now that's the silly. Okay, that's the silly portion of it. I. I'm sorry, but what about prisoners? What about the kite runner? Like, you don't like the way they use, you know, sexual assault of a child in the movie. You, you can't go down that road. You just can't. I'm sorry that James Bulger died. This movie, I am interested in seeing it. I do want to see the other side of the story. I acknowledge it's probably gonna, it's causing the family a lot of pain. My recommendation to them is that they don't watch it. But I will never be for censoring a movie just because someone's feelings got hurt. But now I'm going to pass the question off to you. We've been talking for quite a while. What do you think? Do you agree, disagree? I would love to know. So comment below, flame responsibly, be respectful, and I will see you next time.